What is up everybody? It is your boy Fry. Thank you once again for tuning in to another question and answer. Shout out to the notification gang and everyone that tunes in week after week. Smash a like so I know you're there and I know to continue doing these videos. So yeah, we've got some good questions that we'll get straight into. You know, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And yeah, feel free to drop a comment for next week if you have any audio related questions, I will try and get to them. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. Alright, Bread Beats asks, Farai, what are the most important things to upgrade in the setup? So in my opinion, I always base my studios around an audio interface. For me personally, when I think about, you know, where we've come, um, you know, in the future of audio, it seems that the audio interface has replaced the modern day or the olden day mixing console. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, when we look at our audio interface, we have inputs, right, for our microphones, our keyboards, our, our microphones and that kind of thing. And we have outputs for our speakers. But the most important thing that I find when it comes to an audio interface is that within an audio interface, you'll find something called an analog to digital slash digital to analog converter chip. Now, what that means is, you know, you need to figure out a way to listen to the audio from your PC. So that's what this card is capable of doing. It is capable of converting all of the digital data that you have within your computer into analog audio. So you can listen to that via your headphones or via your speakers. So in my opinion, it is very important to have a high quality audio interface, get the best one you can afford. So that way you can clearly hear the audio that you are, um, you know, working with, uh, you know, upgrading to a nice audio interface or just a step up from your laptop audio or whatever it is, is definitely going to make the world uh, of a difference. You're going to start hearing your synths differently, your vocals differently, your beats differently. Uh, so, you know, definitely invest in that. After that, I would definitely say to invest in uh, your monitoring. So that means if your room is untreated, I would highly recommend going for some biodynamic headphones, some high quality audio Technica headphones uh, or what you can do is if your room if you can't afford any acoustic treatment or it's just not possible for you to do that definitely get some smaller speakers you know something like the Yamaha HS5s work in an untreated room pretty well because they don't have that uh, you know extended bass range you know it's really hard to treat bass even a, a room that is well treated can have bass problems so you know uh, the lower you go in frequency the more costly your acoustic treatment gets so you know if you want to get a pair of speakers definitely get yourself some smaller monitors uh, you know, even the IK Multimedia iLouds, I think they call them, some really good speakers to get. Uh, after that, after monitoring, you know, headphones or speakers, I would go for a microphone because, you know, that way then you can start recording your own music. But to summarize it, I would go for audio interface, monitoring, uh, or audio interface, acoustic treatment, monitoring, microphone. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, Majesty on Flex asks, Hey Fry, man, I've got a question. How do I make my track uh, louder after mixing without compressing so much? and I need help on the waves loudness meter. All right, that is a good question. It is a two part question, so I'll try and answer it as best as possible. So when it comes to mastering uh, your mixes, especially in hip hop, uh, we'll notice a lot of the time that the kick and bass is really loud. Now, why is that important? Um, generally, when it comes to bass and kicks, they usually use up all of the headroom on your master channel, you know? So if you have a kick and it's, it's clipping, um, you know, everything else can be really soft right but then the kick drum is clipping so that means it's, it's taking up all of the space on the master bus meaning that you'd probably have to compress it so what i would always do is i would go back into the mixing stage and try and um, start off for me personally when i start a mix i always try and level the kick and the bass as best as possible i try and make the snare really smack so that you know the louder you turn up the song as a listener you know the louder the snare is kind of going to be so you don't want to you know it's going to sound a bit louder so uh you know the best way i can describe that is uh look at music within three sections right you've got your bass your mid-range and your treble so you know you need to learn how to work on each separate part of the mix um, I, re I highly recommend to get a reference track as well and then kind of listen to what you know the mid-range is doing within that reference track listen to how the treble sounds how the hi-hat sound how the treble of the vocal sounds and then listen to you know the kick and bass and how loud is it um, one thing that for example you'll find a difference in when listening to rock versus hip-hop is that rock music usually has what we call a really good crest factor meaning that everything is kind of sitting leveled you know but when it comes to hip-hop you know we've kind of got more of a slanted um kind of if you look at hip-hop on an analysis plugin like you know the pass meter or a uh, span meter you know which is a free downloadable plugin you will notice that the kick drum is really loud usually because that's the way hip-hop is um you know but when it comes to rock if everything is leveled you can turn everything up 
uh, together as one thing and you get this really loud sounding song so that is kind of the the trick when it comes to hip-hop you know is trying to level that kick and snare and having that vocal sit in the middle uh, is really going to get you that kind of loud result the best album i would recommend to listen to to learn how to do this is dr dre's the chronic album that was pretty much when he was in his prime and uh, those are some of the best hip-hop mixes all the pro engineers agree that that is definitely a good uh, album to listen to when it comes to you know learning about how to make your mix louder you know if your kick sounds like dr dre's good if your vocal sounds like dr dre's good if your treble and snare sounds like dr dre's dre's good you know what i mean then you've kind of got the right um thing going on now when it comes to the waves loudness meter uh it is an LUFS meter for those who don't know. LUFS stands for loudness units with reference to full scale. That is all scientific uh, stuff. But basically what it means is it is an analysis of um, the overall loudness of a song. So each uh, streaming platform, for example, has a different uh, spec, right? So for example, YouTube now wants minus 14 LUFS. So when you have that loudness meter up, let the whole song play through and then the result that you get for the long-term value, you know, should kind of give you an idea of where your track is sitting. So if your track's sitting at minus 13.8 and you're uploading to YouTube, good, you've won the game. Uh, you know, 0.2 LFS is perfect. Now, back when I used to work uh, with a lot more TV people, I still kind of do some adverts once in a while, but you will notice that on TV, we have to all mix to minus 23 LFS. And what that means is that um, we all want everything that comes on TV to have the same type of loudness so that because you know if you remember back in a few years ago and it still happens today you know for example if you are watching a movie and then an advert comes on the advert was always much louder than the, the TV show uh, that's why you know the EBU which is the I think the European Broadcasting Union decided that hey we need to find a common reference level so that everyone mixes to the same loudness so uh, definitely do more research on that I'm just kind of summarizing everything but hopefully that answers your question <laughs> all right riven bot asks please type this video out my english is not very good i am from brazil i truly wish uh that i would be able to type out you know these videos into you know text form but i think it would just take so long unfortunately so if there is someone out there man who is good at doing this or knows a kind of life hack, life hack method doing this please help us out cool yng svn asks how do you get the free presets to load in fl studio 12 all right so I get this question a lot pretty much every week and basically you know what all of these questions are asking is you know how do we get presets to load in certain versions of fl studio now if you've been using fl studio for a long time you will know that they are about 200 different versions i'm sure by now you know uh, every time there is a new version release for example fl studio 20 there will be 20 releases of that same version you know because there are bug fixes and all sorts of things going on now when it comes to loading up presets and, and opening FLP files, you need to understand that FLP is not backwards compatible. Now, what do I mean by that is FL Studio will not uh, load, for example, an FL Studio 20 file in FL Studio 12, but an FL Studio 12 file will be able to be opened in FL Studio 20. So, you know, that's why I recommend to everyone have both versions installed on your computer. You can have FL Studio 12 and 20 or 11 and 20. 20 is a separate installer. So have that installed. So for when you want to download free presets and they are an FL Studio 20 preset, you can actually use them. Um, you know, FL Studio 12 and 11 is really old. You know, I know a lot of people like that version, but why not have both versions? Hopefully that answers your question. SlickZ95 asks, how did you stock stand? All right, Catalyst Music asks, so my question, I have a two track beat and I mix my vocals into it. The problem is the record doesn't sound as loud as other tracks. Why is that? All right, so this is another uh, you know question relating to mastering and that is usually because the beat has not been mixed to the point where it is capable of being pushed to extreme loudnesses. So what do I mean by that is the kick is probably way louder than the instruments as well as the snare. So it is really important to make sure that you level your beat as best as possible and then begin record recording your vocals onto it and then pretty much push up the, the overall level. Um, and also use a reference track, as I said before. Listen to an ASAP Rocky song or whatever it is alongside your song and, you know, be truthful. Is my song as loud as that song? Does it need to be as loud as that song? Um, you know, uh, you know, what does the quality sound like? What did the kick drum sound like? What does the snare sound like? You know, start listening to sound like that and comparing your music to other music and over time you will get better. It definitely is really hard to do that. I remember, you know, when I started off and you listen to this amazing uh, song, you know, and your song kind of sounds soft and, 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 and not really good. You know, it's, it's terrible, I know, but this is what truly makes you a better mixer. So take some time to do that. 
uh, and start off with high quality beats as I tell everyone that's the true life hack so yeah hopefully that answers your question all right, so uh, RISBO asks, Hi bro, love all your videos. What are the best free plugins for working out or working on hip hop voices? Um, what techniques should beginners use? All right, so if you want to get into some cool free plugins, you know, my favorite free plugin is definitely the DD channel, uh, Dead Duck uh, channel, I guess, as well as the Logic channel because it is similar to an SSL style plugin. I personally like using SSL style plugins, so definitely do some Googling, uh, find out about the company Solid State Logic. Uh, another free company uh, which makes really good software is TDR. Uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs from what I understand shout out Royal Music he's deep into it you can go and find him uh, probably in the comment section below he always pops up when you request him so shout out to Royal Music um, who else make great plugins I don't know check out KVR you know for some good free software but as always I always say all you ever need in life is an equalizer and a compressor all right if you can have those two things your mixes should not sound bad so yeah man stick to the basics uh, you know watch some top 10 videos on free plugins, you know to get some good stuff But personally, I recommend TDR Nova for free plugins uh, the modern series as well I was heavy on that last year. Yeah, man try, you know, just find some good stuff Go watch my older videos as well. I've done top 10 uh, free VSTs and that kind of thing So yeah, all right, so Mellow Out Vlogs asks um, from my hip-hop uh, mastering video uh, How did you get it really loud? I wanted to see what your RMS level was so all right So how do you get hip-hop loudness? Um, so Step one for me personally is make sure the kick and snare are leveled, right? So the bass isn't so loud that it's sucking up everything on the limit, as I said earlier. Um, and then another trick, guys, is to learn about the Fletcher Munson curve. You can go and Google that if you really want to get deep into the physics of sound. But, you know, sound really becomes painful around 3,000 to 6,000 hertz, you know, in the middle, like 5.4 kilohertz, uh, 5,400 hertz is really where we perceive loudness. So the most important thing that I see a lot of people don't do is really work on your mid range of your song, because that's where that loudness comes from. You know, you can have the loudest kick drum in the world, but on a cell phone, it is pretty much useless because guess what? A cell phone speaker is not capable of producing that frequency range. And usually if your kick drum is too loud, you're going to be absolutely distorting people's subwoofers in their cars and that kind of thing. So really learn how to level all three parts of your mix as i said earlier on bass uh, mid-range and treble and that way you're going to get much louder mixes now when it comes to rms uh, I, I don't mix to RMS standard anymore, I mix to LUFS. Now the best rule of thumb I heard Alex Tumay talk about this once is he says he does all of his mixes for, you know, and he mixes for Ski Mask, for Juice World, for all these different people. Um, you know, he even did a future, a couple future records, you know, um, but he usually mixes to minus 9.7 uh, LUFS. But yeah, as I was saying, I would definitely mix to a minimum or a maximum level of minus 8 LUFS. You can go for Mike Dean loudness, definitely use some Travis Scott records if you want to get the loudest kind of sound. It's minus 6 LUFS, uh, which I've seen some records, you know, Mike Dean hit those levels, which is extremely loud. But I would not go any softer than minus 15 LUFS. That's kind of when your mix starts to sound a bit weaker than everything else out there. There's a good channel I recommend you guys and girls to go and watch, which is Streaky Mastering. He's really good at answering these questions. He's a pro mastering engineer who's been mastering in England for many years. Go check out his channel. He talks about, he doesn't even worry about mixing to a certain standard. For example, YouTube is minus 14 LUFS. That's what their standard is. He doesn't really worry about that. He just says he mixes as loud as he thinks is good and then just allows the algorithm to do whatever it does because that's what everyone else is doing. So uh, many different opinions. We're kind of sitting in no man's land when it comes to, you know, what is the best level. But um, yeah, that's kind of my take on it. All right, Victor Van Dort. I don't know how to say your surname, but he says, uh, the vocal effects are awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I try and put a lot of effort into these vocal effect videos. So check them out. You know, cops and vocal effects as well. One of the last uh, questions comes from Raza Raw, and he's asking about, um, to summarize it, I won't read the whole uh, first paragraph, but in summary, should I use a mixing board to an audio interface to a computer or should I use an interface going into a mixer board into a computer? Now, for me, I see two different scenarios when you list those two options, right? And option A, which is the top one right there, would be your mixer board to interface to computer. Now, I think about having a mixing board on the first point of your recording um, chain, right? I would think that you're recording a band, all right? Because uh, I would see benefit in having you know, the guitar, the drums and everything go into a nice analog mixing board, doing a little bit of EQ, doing a bit of leveling, and then sending all of those channels into your interface, going into your computer. That's option A. Option B, going from interface to mixing console, 
back to the computer, right? Actually meaning, you know, audio interface or computer audio interface into mixing board, into audio interface, into computer, because, you know, your audio interface is your mixer essentially, right? That's what communicates with the computer. I would see that more for a mixing engineer. So for example, if I was to mix a record and I wanted to use a mixing console, I would have to send everything out of my door, out of FL Studio, out of the audio interface to go into my mixing board, do all my mixing there, and I'd have to go back into the inputs of the audio interface. That's more a mixing scenario. Um, I'd have to do a full video on that. Personally, I like to do the first option. You know, I've got a mic preamp, right? Which then goes into my audio interface, which then goes into my computer. That for me personally is a better, uh, what we call the front end approach, which you focus on high quality uh, mic preamps going into your computer and then you mix in the box. Um, I think the days of mixing out the box are a bit dead just because, you know, for example, when I have clients, um, they want their mixes done like quickly, you know, so there isn't really time to be sending stuff out to outboard gear. Now, what I do do is I do a bit of summing. So I've got a uh, SPL Vitalizer. It's not really a summing mixer, but it is something I like to use for um, just getting a bit of a sweet kind of sound on the mix. That way I only have to send two channels out of my interface, get a sweeter sound back into the computer and those settings never really change. So, you know, there are many options. Definitely watch some uh, other guys talk about this. There are definitely some good videos on the subject. Good question. Okay, Haku asks, when are you gonna get your new studio? And yeah, this is the new studio. Uh, I still have a few pieces of gear to come. Now you see, as you can see right there, there's a hole in that, that compartment there. My compressor used to be there. I had a URI LA4, which has died on me. So that's getting repaired. And I'm waiting for another secret piece of gear that's coming in that I, I, I got in like May and I've been waiting, it for, waiting for it for a really long time. Once that gets here, I think I will do a bit of a studio tour. The studio is nice. It's just a nice place to mix and work every day. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that one day. So yeah, I think that's all the questions we have. I thank you once again for sticking around. If you did decide to watch the whole video, uh, you know, smash that like button. And as I said before, feel free to ask any questions. If it is a good question I feel will help the channel, I will answer it. Um, and yeah, man, subscribe if you have not. And I hope you have a great Sunday. Uh, hopefully this video will be out by then. So yeah, check you out next time. Peace out.